Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. Detroit, the Motor City, Motown, the arsenal of democracy. Known for its contributions to music, auto manufacturing, and being the home of Rosa Parks, Jimmy Hoffa, Sonny Bono, Henry Ford, Tim Allen, Kid Rock, and Madonna also known for very rarely making the NFL playoffs. They're also known for a style of pizza. In 1946, at Buddy's Rendezvous, a former speakeasy, Gus and Anna Guerrera created an incredible masterpiece. A pizza made in blue steel pans that were typically used as automotive drip pans or pans used to hold industrial parts at factories with a thick, crusty crisp topped with Wisconsin brick cheese all the way to the edges and three stripes of sauce. The cheese being pushed all the way to the edge allows it to melt over the edge of the crust, giving you along the perimeter this incredibly crunchy, cheesy, crusty mixture. And that's what we're gonna make today. So I don't have blue steel pans, but I have a couple things that are close. I have this pan that I normally use to make cupcake chicken in an upcoming episode. And I have this cast iron pan. So we're going to do a little bit of experiment today and see which one of these two works better. So those are both 12 by eight. So that's how my ingredients are ratioed out. Uh, if you have different size pans yourself, take the dimensions of your pan, figure out the area and then ratio these as necessary. As I said, those are two 12 by eight pans. So that's 192 square inches of pizza deliciousness. So what I have here is 402 grams of bread flour, not your regular AP flour, bread flour. I have 2.4 grams of rapid rise yeast. I have 8.4 grams of salt, sea salt and 288 grams of water between 85 and 88 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna put that on the mixture and we're gonna let this mix until we have a smooth round bowl. After applying electricity to your mixer, start at a low speed. After a little bit of mixing, scrape everything down, make sure everything gets incorporated. Once it looks like all your ingredients are moistened, then you can go ahead and raise the speed. And I'm gonna let this go for about five minutes. So now I'm gonna take a large bowl and we're gonna get that oiled up. All right. And with wetted hands, plop our dough into our bowl. I'm gonna roll that around a little bit, make sure all sides get oiled. We're going to cover this bowl and let that dough set for about 30 minutes in a warm place like Arizona. Okay, our 30 minutes are up. So now we need to build some strength in those glutens. So we're going to take our dough here, going to oil our hands a little bit to minimize the sticking. And then we're going to take it, get a corner here, stretch it and fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. And if I haven't lost count for the sixth time, turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Now, we're gonna take that and fold it a few times till I have a nice taut bowl. There we go and then back in. Now we're gonna cover it again with plastic wrap after I wash this oil off my paws. Sticky paws make me crazy. Uh, and then we're gonna let it rest for another two hours in a warm place. Here we are at the stove. First thing we're gonna do is get that pan on medium high heat and we're gonna throw down a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Now we're gonna wait until we see that start. Okay, I'm seeing some shimmering. Now we're gonna get our garlic in there. We want the garlic warmed up, roasted a little bit, maybe a little brown, definitely no black. So we've got to keep an eye on this and it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. 
I'm gonna get every little bit of that deliciousness in there. Get that in the oil, get spread around. All right, I'm liking what I'm smelling. So now in with the tomato sauce and our oregano and basil. That all mixed in. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of sugar in there. Healthy pinch of salt and pepper. And a little bit more olive oil, because I love that flavor. All right, starting to get a simmer. So I'm gonna take the heat down to low, medium low. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this and stir occasionally for the next 20 minutes until this thickens up. Okay, I think we're about there. So see when you take the spoon across there and it doesn't come back together very quickly, that means we have a good thick sauce. So that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna turn off that heat, get this into, we're gonna turn off the heat, we're gonna get this into a bowl and get it into the refrigerator uh, until we're ready to use it. Next thing we're gonna do is get some Italian sausage browned up. I know that most of the Detroit style pizzas that you'll see out there on YouTube uh, use just pepperoni. I absolutely love Italian sausage. In fact, we make our own here at the Galley of the Sun, which will be featured in a future video. But for now, let's get about a pound of that browned. So the two hour rest of the dough is almost done. So we have a few things we gotta do. First of all, we need to get both of these pans totally lined with olive oil. Because we do not want that beautiful dough to stick. So put two to three tablespoons in each one. And then we're gonna take a paper towel and make sure we get every square inch of the inside of these pans covered with that olive oil. There's one done. Okay, they're both done. Next thing we're gonna do is prepare our garlic paste. This is in no way Detroit style pizza traditional. Full disclosure, I saw Sam the cooking guy do this and it seemed like a damn good idea. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get our garlic paste here. Gonna get about eh, four tablespoons or so of that in here. And then we're gonna mix that with some olive oil. That all emulsified here. All right, and that's gonna go on top of our crust before we put the cheese on it. Let's go get the dough. Dough's been resting for two hours. Woo, look at that. Definitely doubled in size. We're gonna poke that down a little bit. Then we're gonna get flour on our cutting board here. A little bit of flour on top of the dough. And we're gonna get that turned out onto our cutting board. From here, we're gonna take that and get it into some sort of rectangular shape where it's easier for us to judge portions and it's gonna make it easier for us to get in the pan. And then we're gonna cut this right in half, right about there. Now we're gonna put it into our cast iron and then we're gonna work that and get it as much as we can to all the edges. Now it's not gonna go all the way for you. Those glutens are going crazy. So we're gonna have to let them relax. So work it easy, take your time. Unlike almost every other type of pizza, we're not trying to make a lip here. We want a totally flat surface all the way across. Just keep working it towards those edges until you get the good feeling that it's not gonna go anymore. All right, then we're gonna let that rest for 30 minutes and let those glutens relax. Do the same thing with our second pan and the other half of the dough. Okay, then we're gonna give that 30 minutes. So our dough has been resting for 30 minutes. Now get it pushed all the way into those corners. Once again, be very careful not to form a lip because what we want, because what makes Detroit style pizza special is that cheese is gonna melt over the edge and get between the pan and the crust and then cook into the crust. That's what we want. Next thing I'm gonna do to prep this is to brush some of that garlic paste and olive oil on top of it. Okay, that's there. Next, I have my cheese. 
Uh, I could not find Wisconsin brick cheese here in Arizona. So what I have is a good substitute. It is a half and half mixture of Monterey Jack that's shredded and low moisture mozzarella. So a good layer going all the way to the edges is what we want. Once you have that good even layer on there, now it's time for your toppings. The sky is the limit. What you'll see on most videos for Detroit style pizza is pepperoni. I'll talk more about the type of pepperoni you want in a second, but I do not believe I am physically capable of making a pizza without Italian sausage. I freaking love it. When I make my own, I love to put extra fennel seeds in there. Absolutely love the flavor. So that's what we're gonna put on next is the Italian sausage. So we have that that we made up before. I'm gonna split it into halves here because I got two pizzas and I want them to be equally awesome. Get that evenly distributed throughout my pizza. We want our pepperoni to go on there. So what you want for Detroit style pizza is the type of pepperoni that's gonna turn into a little cup and in the middle of that cup is some delicious pepperoni oil. The way you get that is you have to have pepperoni with natural casing. Now you could get the boar's head, stick pepperoni, natural casing, slice that up the thickness that you want and put that on there. I found these Hormel cup and crisp pepperonis. And that's what I'm gonna use on this. So I got two pizzas, I'm gonna eyeball this puppy and take about half and half. And then sky's the limit. Pepperoni the heck out of this thing. Right now, my oven is preheating to 550 degrees. If yours only goes to 500, go for that. And then keep an eye on your pizza. So your cooking times could be different than mine. I've got mine set to 550. I also have a pizza baking stone in my oven right now. The heat that that retains and radiates the pan is gonna make sure that the bottom of my crust is super crispy. And that's what we're looking for here. We've got a lot of oil in there, so basically this dough is gonna fry. Okay, we got our cheese on, our sausage on, our pepperonis on. Now, the other characteristic of a Detroit style pizza is that thick sauce that's on top, but you don't spread it all over like you do with most types of pizza. You put it in two or three, depending on the size of your pan, stripes. You wanna give room for the cheese to get that direct heat because it is the oils from the cheese that is gonna help make this crust super crispy. The last finishing touch could be some Parmesan, but you know we don't do things easy here at the Galley of the Sun. So what I'm gonna put on top of that is some of our magic cheese, which is a mixture of Romano, Parmesan, Asiago and Mistra cheese. So as soon as my oven hits temperature, this is going in. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second one. Again, good and rested. Push all the way to the edge. Do not make a lip. Make very sure that you got it flat all the way across. Garlic paste. If you're not a huge garlic fan, this is totally optional and it is not traditional to the Detroit style pizza. We just love the hell out of garlic here at the Galley of the Sun. Hey, if you do like this stuff that you're seeing, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. The notification bell will tell you every time we have a new episode come out. And definitely leave us comments. What's your favorite type of pizza? Do you do your Detroit style pizza different than us? Put it down in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Garlic's on. Next is the cheese. Get that spread all the way to every edge. Remainder of the Italian sausage and all the rest of my pepperonis. Three lines of sauce and the magic cheese. All right, we are 16 to 20 minutes away from pizza heaven. First pizza is out of the oven and it looks absolutely amazing. First thing you wanna do is take some sort of flat implement like this and go along the edges, make sure that we get this out in one piece and then we don't lose any of that fantastic cheese that is baked right into the side of the crust. We're gonna get a large spatula and make sure that we got it free, that end's free. That end's free. 
Okay, now we're gonna transfer this without burning ourselves, maybe, to the cutting board. And look at that, that is exactly what we're looking for. Got that cheese baked into the sides, Let's cut into this one. Then I'm gonna let it set. I gotta feed the rest of the masses, but then we'll wait till the other one gets done and we'll find out which is better, that aluminum pan or that cast iron pan that I used. Oh, the crunch. All right, I'm gonna give a try of the cast iron pan one. Got that cheese cooked in the edge. Dough's totally cooked, delicious, flaky. That crispy cheese on the edge, outstanding. Now I'll we'll have to see if the other pan does as well. All right, second pizza's out, paw protector. Make sure we get that separated from the edge. Well, this one seems, yeah, I didn't have to do that at all. The, the crust pulled away from the pan a little bit, unlike what it did in the cast iron one where it stayed. So I think it's ready to come out now. Look at that. Okay, let's get that thing cut up so I can give it a try. Now this took about four less minutes. I'm still getting the same crunch as I'm cutting it. And visually it appears to be just as done as the cast iron skillet or the cast iron baking pan. Oh, it's so tempting, but I know I'm gonna melt my face. I'm gonna cut the rest of the pizza up to keep myself busy so I'm, I'm not tempted. Let's give it a try. Oh, mmm, look at that. That's that second pan. Cast iron skillet looks pretty same, but I think this is actually crispier. Oh, absolutely incredible. You gotta try this recipe. Give it a shot. Thank you very much for joining us, and until next time, fair winds and following seas.